Let me let me start with this. The the average price of gas, and you you tell me whether this is good. It it has dropped, but. The four-week average of gasoline consumption, the best gauge for the, of demand in the country, is now a million barrels lower than it was in the summer of, of 2020 for the same period. So that the $4, even though it's come down, it's now become, uh, it's at the point where people are driving less than, than even during the pandemic when there wasn't a lot of people go, going out. So the, the inflation is still biting uh, people, uh, Mr. Secretary. No question the inflation is still biting people, and that's, that's why it remains the president's top economic priority. I will say there's a lot of layers to that figure of, uh, of consumption going down, right? Part of it is also that people are going to be more comfortable using transit or, or trains or other ways of getting around now than they would have been a year ago when not as many people were, uh, were vaccinated and protected. Uh, you've got a lot of different dynamics going on. But look, there's no question that uh, we want to continue to see gas prices go down and become more affordable for Americans. Uh, and we want to continue to see prices in general get under control. I think the steps that, that have been taken have had a, a real impact on that. We're going to keep pushing. The, we've talked about the Fed a lot, and it, it's an unwieldy tool to try to, to conquer inflation, and that is by, by trying to lessen demand in a lot of different areas. That's not, just isn't the greatest way to do things. It'd be better to increase supply, a lot of people say. So let's get back to, to what I always, I don't know if badger is the right word, but, but I, I always ask you about whether we're doing everything we can uh, on the supply side uh, for production. And we know that, that, that people want to move to renewables. You've made that point. Some would say that Germany and Europe that they rushed it. Are you saying right now that you're envious of the energy mix that Germany has right now in terms of, of hydrocarbons versus renewables? Or, or do you admit we need 10 years of, of maximum production of hydrocarbons as a bridge to the future? Oh, look, Germany's going to do what's right for Germany. We're going to do what's right for the U.S. I think you make a really good point about the supply side of things. Look, uh, what we need to do as a country, what we're seeing in terms of keeping up with the red-hot demand uh, that has uh, uh, been the case in this economy under this president, uh, and uh, you know what we need to do candidly in order to actually deliver on this infrastructure bill, it is going to test the productive capacity of this country and of this economy. I think in a good way, but we've got to gear up for it. And that means on, on everything from raw materials to workforce, and we're investing a ton in workforce, including on the, on the programs that, uh, that my department's working on, uh, and, and of course on energy. We, we've got to make sure we're ready. Now, we've also got to make sure we drive that transition to domestic clean energy. I don't think anyone's under any illusions that that can be done easily or that it can be done overnight. But one of many, many things that is exciting about the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which is also the most significant, uh, stands to be the most significant climate action we've ever had in, in federal law, is that it helps pave the way for that, for that zero carbon energy production, including, by the way, uh, realistic choices around nuclear, uh, which is uh, maybe not zero worry, but it is zero carbon and is part of the story, which is why it's uh, part of what is supported with the, uh, uh, with the, the tax uh, and credit structure that, that's built into the Inflation Reduction Act. So, yes, we've got to pay attention to the supply. So we respect the independence of the Fed, uh, a big difference between this administration and the last, but also recognize that the Fed's got their job, but fiscal policy and, and investment policy on the part of the administration uh, has to be there to support a strong, resilient, long-term, robust economy. And, you know, when I say supply side, I, uh, I might mean it in a way that's a little different than the way the term was thrown around in, in, in the Reagan years. But there, there is no question that we've got to be looking at the productive capacity of our country. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.